Welcome back to We Be Kids again. My name's Danny and I'm one of the founders of We Be Kids and I'm also a storyteller. If this is your first time at We Be Kids, know that over on the website there are over 250 free activities and ideas for you and your family to do to help connect you with nature and boost your well-being. Today I've come up to the woods to tell you a story. And recently I've been looking for stories that are about the stars and the moon. And I asked some storytellers if they knew any tales. And a storyteller called Shane Ibs, also known as Storyteller Shane, sent this story to me. And this story is called Moon Valley. Now off in the far lands of the west, there are great snowy mountains, and around the snowy mountains there are great deep valleys. And one of these valleys is so deep that at night time, all you can see in the sky above is the moon. And because of that, this valley and the village in the bottom is known as the village of Moon Valley. Now many, many people lived in the valley. Many, many people enjoyed their lives there. And one winter's day, one of the houses had got up a fire going. They'd started a fire because they were going to make a big pot of tea for everybody to share. But when they came to look for their big silver shiny teapot, it couldn't be found anywhere. They searched high, they searched low, they searched over everything, they searched under everything, but no silver shiny teapot. So they went out into the village square and started asking anybody if they'd seen the big shiny teapot. But what was amazing is that every time they asked somebody, that person also told of something big and silver and shiny that they had also lost. And it soon became apparent that everybody in the village was missing something shiny and silver. Now people began to scratch their heads and think, who could possibly be taking these things? They looked all around the village, but nobody could find the things that were taken. Until one afternoon, as the sun was setting, the light from the sunset caught on something on the valley side. And it began to sparkle and twinkle and immediately they knew that that is where all the things were but this place on the valley side was no ordinary place it was the cave of the great dragon so the people decided that they would head up there and take all of their things back so with great torches and pitchforks and clubs they headed up to the dragon's cave now the dragon was feared in Moon Valley, but it was only feared because nobody really knew the dragon. You see, this dragon wasn't fierce and scary at all. This dragon was actually very friendly, but also very, very lonely. Now the people marched up the side of the valley with torches in one hand, pitchforks in the other. And as they got closer and closer, they became more and more and more afraid. And from inside the cave, the dragon heard them. And the dragon went out to greet them. And the dragon got so excited that as it got there, it opened its mouth to say hello. But instead of words, great big balls of fire came flying out. The people turned and ran and disappeared down the hill. they also noticed that at the back of the cave all of their silver shiny things remained. They began to come up with a plot and a plan for how they could get them back, how they could slay the dragon. But a young girl in the village, she heard of this and she didn't want the dragon to be slayed. She thought maybe if somebody just went and spoke to the dragon they could get all of the things back. So while everybody was busy making a plan, she tiptoed out of the village and up the valley side. 
and all the way to the dragon's cave. And when she got there, she found the dragon crying its eyes out. She said, don't worry, dragon. All we have to do is return all of the silver shiny things and the people will forgive you. But the dragon didn't want to return them. The dragon thought that if it owned all of these shiny things, the people would come and spend time with it. And the young girl didn't know what to do. So she headed back down into the valley and she sought the counsel of one of the elders, a lady of great wisdom. And she asked what should be done. And the elder knew exactly what needed to happen. She put on her big boots and her big coat and her big woolly hat. And with her walking stick, she climbed up the valley side until she got to the dragon's cave. And she went into the dragon's cave and she said, Dragon, do you want to be loved by the people of the village? And the dragon nodded its head. And the elderly lady said, Then there is only one thing to do. Grab all of the shiny silver things and put them on your back. So the dragon did. And the lady climbed up its scales and sat on its back like he would ride a horse. She said to the dragon, fly, my friend, fly. And the dragon ran to the edge of the cave and it jumped and it leaped into the air and it began to fly. And by this time, the sun had gone down. The sky was pitch black. And as they went across the sky, the lady picked off the silver shiny things and she threw them. And as she threw them, they got suspended up there in the darkness. And the dragon threw another and another and another and another until the whole sky was scattered with beautiful, twinkling, sparkly silver things. And from down below, the people of Moon Valley saw the dragon doing this light in the whole sky and at that moment they knew why it had taken the things and at that moment they knew that it was after all a friendly dragon and the dragon flew down and it landed in Moon Valley but Moon Valley felt very very different to how it had before up above the sky was scattered with beautiful stars. And that is how the stars came to illuminate the skies of Moon Valley. So I hope you enjoyed that story. A lovely little one shared by Shane. Thank you very much, Shane. If you enjoyed that story, then head on over webekids.net and check out all the other stories that are there. There are stories about moons and stars and flowers and animals and insects and much, much more. So thanks for stopping by, watching this story, and we'll see you again sometime soon. Bye!